I'd like to call to order the April 21st, 2015 meeting of the Bowling Green Board of Commissioners. I invite you to stand if you wish as Commissioner Williams leads us in our invocation and then the Pledge of Allegiance. Our blessed Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon each and every one of us. We pray now for your leadership and guidance as we consider all the things that may come before us. Help us as we go throughout our daily life that we may do the things that would benefit the people of this community. All this we ask in the name of Jesus and for his blessing and holy sake. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Perrigan. Here. Commissioner Williams. Here. Commissioner Denning. Here. Mayor Wilkerson. Here. Uh, we're going to do awards and recognitions first. Just want to take a time to recognize four people in our community. Uh, the Jefferson Awards are sponsored by WBKO and Bowling Daily News. We want to acknowledge uh, Chris Crothers, Jeff Jordan, Kevin Kirby, and Dr. William Russell for their work in the community and congratulate them on their awards. And next, we have an opportunity to recognize some people in the audience that have special invitation to be here tonight. And I've asked Commissioner Williams if he would uh, help us with that. It's because I'm the tallest one up here. I get yes. to do this. Well, uh, yeah, all these guys are taller than me, but that doesn't take a lot to begin with. It is my pleasure to recognize the Bowling Green High School Purpose on a fantastic season. And we'd like at this time to issue a proclamation um, in recognition of that honor. Yeah, guys. Are you going to have them come up here? Why don't you all come up here and stand around and where they can get you on camera and I'll One try my best to read this thing. Tight fit. Bruce. Uh, uh, behind this too? Uh, Look, uh, they're still taller than I am. <laughs> 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 I believe I could take some up on them. <laughs> slam dunk them. Well, we want to see that. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge, guys. All right, from the office of the mayor, Bowling Green, Kentucky, this proclamation. The season of Bowling Green Purples basketball, 2014-2015. Whereas the Bowling Green High School Purples basketball team maintained a 31-6 winning season for 2014-2015. And whereas the Bowling Green High School Purples basketball team finished runner-up in the Kentucky Basketball State Championship in the KHSAA Sweet 16, and whereas the Bowling Green High School Purples basketball team won the 14th District Championship and 4th Region Championship for the second year in a row and three out of the last four seasons, whereas the Bowling Green High School Purples basketball team and the coaching staff led by head coach D.G. Sherrill has dominated high school basketball in 2014 and 2015, and whereas the Bowling Green High School Purple fans are the greatest fans in Kentucky, now, therefore, we, the Board of Commissioners of the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky, do hereby proclaim November 2014 through March 2015 as the season of Bowling Green Purples basketball in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and acknowledge this outstanding accomplishment in the area of high school athletics and encourage everyone to congratulate all the members of the team and the coaching staff. Signed by Honorable Mayor Bruce Wilkerson, City of Bowling Green. Congratulations, gentlemen. Coach, you got any words for us? Do you have any words for us? Uh, just on behalf of Bowling Green Independent Schools and these young men, Coach Harrell, um, the coaching staff, we, we appreciate the honor and thanks for letting us oh, this, be here tonight. This is an easy one. Congratulations, yeah. gentlemen. Thank you for yeah. coming out. We the appreciate it. Yeah. There you go. Good job, guys. Thank you for coming Thank in. You. Thank Thanks you for a great, great season. season. Enjoy the rest of school year. And, and together, it's always what? A good day to be a, a good purple. Good day to be a purple. <laughs> always a good day to be a purple. <clears throat> With any other awards or recognitions? I have none there. All right. Uh, the first thing we have on our agenda is a public hearing, the purpose of which is to receive comments about the annual action plan draft for year 12 
and the amendment of the annual action plan for year 11 of the Community Development Bro Block Grant Entitlement Program. I think Nick Cook's going to lead us on. Mr. Nick Cook in his first appearance here, so come right ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. As the Mayor mentioned, tonight's public hearing is to discuss the year 12 annual action plan <coughs> and year 11 annual action plan amendment for the city's community development block grant program. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to mention that we have a sign-in sheet being passed around tonight, so I just ask the members of the audience to please sign in so we can uh, document attendance this evening. Okay, so this is fe direct federal funding that comes to the city annually from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. This is the city's 12th year of uh, being a direct recipient of this funding since the city uh, reached a population of 50,000 or greater. And the funding is determined each year by formula based on population, poverty, age of housing, growth lag, and overcrowding. CDBG recipients are required to have a five-year consolidated plan. Uh, the consolidated plan is developed from data research and uh, citizen input and it establishes priority needs for spending CDBG funds in the community. And each year of the consolidated plan, the city is required to have an annual action plan which identifies specific uh, projects for funding. Uh, all projects funded with CDBG dollars must meet one of three national objectives. The first and most important, benefiting people of low to moderate income. 70% uh, of the city's funds must meet this national objective. Uh, the second one being preventing or eliminating slum and blight, and the third uh, meeting urgent uh, community development needs. Okay, the annual action plan process. This started back in January with a public comment period from December 30th through January 29th. Um, during that time, we asked for comments from the public regarding community development and housing needs in the community. Uh, also, during that time, we had a public hearing on January 20th where we kind of gave a brief overview of the CDBG program as well as uh, give another opportunity for public comment. And then after that first public comment period, we had an agency application process for our program funding. Uh, this open process was from January 30th to February 20th. Uh, we received 10 applications this year. We had a, a review committee that uh, reviewed the applications and gave funding recommendations. Uh, after that, we drafted the annual action plan, which took a little over a month. Uh, then we started our second public comment period on April 1st and given the public the opportunity to review the annual action plan and offer any public comment. And then, of course, we're having our second and final public hearing tonight. Uh, after we go through the public comment process, then we have to begin the approval <coughs> process, uh, which would be the city commission uh, approving the annual action plan that's scheduled for May 5th. And then from there, the annual action plan goes to HUD Louisville for their approval for the May 15th deadline. Uh, after we receive HUD's approval, then we must go through an environmental review process for each project or program funded with CDBG dollars. Uh, this is about a 60 to 90 day process. And once we get through that, then we can begin implementation of the annual action plan or the projects or programs that we fund may begin. So this year, the city is receiving approximately $522,215. Uh, of that amount, 20% is going towards uh, programs and public services. Uh, another 20% is going towards administration and fair housing. And then the remaining 60% is going towards neighborhood improvements. And uh, Brent Childers will be talking a little bit more about that uh, this evening. <clears throat> so there were five agencies recommended for funding from the review committee this year. Uh, the first being the Bowling Green Warren County Welfare Center at $24,400. This was to provide one-time rental or utility assistance to LMI individuals at risk <coughs> of eviction or utility disconnection. And they expect to serve approximately 162 households. Uh, next was the Bowling Green Human Rights Commission at $34,400, and this was to continue fair housing education efforts through workshops, presentations, uh, information distribution, and receipt of housing complaints, and they expect to serve more than 2,500 individuals. And the Housing Authority of Bowling Green was recommended to receive $45,000 for small business training and technical assistance in partnership with WKU Small Business Development Center and they expect to serve 100 individuals and 18 small businesses. And then Big Brothers and Big Sisters of South Central Kentucky were recommended to receive $25,000 to provide 
uh, mentoring services to at-risk LMI youth and they expect to serve 23 people. Then Hope House Ministries was recommended to receive $10,000. This is for a new program. It's a 12-month transitional housing program for uh, men struggling with substance abuse. Um, they will be primarily targeting men exiting uh, incarceration from the uh, justice system. And this program will have uh, literacy training, job training, uh, GED training, addiction recovery courses, uh, with the ultimate goal of sending these gentlemen back into society successfully and reducing uh, recidivism rates. And they expect to serve five people with this program. And then uh, $70,000 was recommended for the uh, administration and oversight of the program. One thing we wanted to point out was uh, while the city is eligible to utilize $104,400 for administration, we actually only use 13% of overall funding, which frees up additional uh, funding for programs and services. So uh, at this time, Brent Childers is going to uh, begin his part of the presentation with the Neighborhood Improvements Program. Thank you, Nick. Last year, with the development and the <laughs> approval of the consolidated plan, um, we created the BG Reinvestment Area. And since this tracks 101, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 12, and that's actually just the city portion of, of 112. Uh, and historically, we've always had a focus in 101, 102, and 103. And that was the enterprise community for about 11 years. The enterprise community designation expired several years ago. And what we saw, though, was issues that were in the EC, the enterprise community, were also in 104, 105, and 112. So we wanted to address some of those needs. So I, I developed this uh, BG reinvestment area. We're looking at making all of our investments within this. And as part of that, developed the Neighborhood Improvement Program. And as many of you have heard me say over and over, uh, we've selected 105.2, which is roughly Fairview to 14th, Chestnut to the bypass. This isn't the best map, but it's really hard to find a, a map of a census block group. And that's kind of the rough area of what we're looking at. And that's what we selected for investment for year 11 and year 12 funding. So as part of that process, uh, there was kind of two ways of two ways that we went about this. We developed uh, staff work groups, and the staff came from NCS, Public Works, Police, and Parks. And each of them were split into two different teams, and they completed neighborhood tours. And they just went out through the neighborhood as groups and looking at what are ways to improve the neighborhood. What are things that we could do to make improvements? And where I thought they were going to bring back projects, I really saw more issues and things that they just kept seeing over and over in the neighborhood. And so I'll, I'll get to how we've resolved some of that as we move forward. While they were out doing that, I was handling the citizen outreach part. That was my role in this process. And then we just completed this uh, last week. Uh, so a lot of this is, is still in the, the final stages. So I set up four stakeholder meetings, uh, two business owners and two pastors. One of the business owners lives in the neighborhood and just sat down with them and had a conversation, about 30 minutes, asking them some questions, some, you know, what their experience is in the neighborhood, things like that. Uh, the, the questions that, that we asked, that I asked going through this, centered around three simple things. What do you like about the neighborhood? What opportunities do you see on public property? And what opportunities do you see on private property? We asked those questions at the stakeholder meetings. We sent out 800 postcards to every property owner and resident, had an open house at our building, invited people in and asked those same three questions. Just to, just to start the dialogue on what, what things do you see. And then we also did citizen surveys through our partnership with Hill House. They covered their primary service area, which is pretty much 10th, 11th, uh, those areas. We used a couple of interns to do some outer areas to do some citizen surveys, asking those same three questions. What we found was four main issues. This came from the conversations that I had at the stakeholder meetings at the open house, the citizen surveys, and also as the staff groups were out touring the neighborhoods. Suitable housing, street improvements, sidewalk improvements, park improvements. Those were the four things that, that just kept coming back. And somebody might say something in more detail, but it real, really centered around one of these types of issues. What you see here to the right is a recently completed CWG project. This is the College View Sidewalk Project. And as we talk about this, you know, I just want to kind of refresh your mind on what some of the finished product looks like because everything right now is still in the planning side of things. So talking about sidewalks, uh, we proposed to do the Josephine Sidewalk Project. That would be Josephine from Lane to Lehman and call it from Josephine to the bypass. Uh, right now on the FY14 new sidewalk program administered by Public Works, uh, there's a project out there to be built that will complete Lehman. 
uh, sidewalk Lehman. Once that's done, that's going to create these gaps back up the line. This project was not in the sidewalk list. This came about because staff were out there and looking and saw, hey, we've got a gap here. This is an opportunity for us to fix this. Uh, as far as the park improvements, there is a, there is a park in the neighborhood, uh, Reservoir Hill Park. And what we're looking at is, is doing some aesthetic improvements, retaining wall, the shelter. Um, I, I say accessories, and I want to try to explain that a little bit more, looking at benches, trash cans, things like that, but also wanted to leave some opportunity with the master plan still finishing its development to leave some opportunity there if something comes out of that to where we have some funding to make some improvements in that park, because it really is a neighborhood park. Uh, and also trying to address some of the parking concerns that we have up there. The main issue that we saw through all these conversations was the residential side, the housing, suitable housing part. So we feel like we need to develop a program to address some of those concerns. So what we're talking about is the residential improvements program. And we're trying to, we want to make this uh, very open so we can address a lot of the issues that we see. Uh, so it could be demolition, could be acquisition, rehab, uh, treatment of some environmental contaminants. We found out some information on some specific pieces of property up there. So we wanted to have a program where we, where we could address some of those issues. Fourth part on the street improvement is the transit shelter. Uh, we would like to see it be placed on the Collet Lane. That's where the International Center is, to have it placed in, in conjunction with that sidewalk project. But we do plan to work with our partners at GoBG Transit to look at some of the other stops uh, in the neighborhood to see if there is a better location. Uh, we anticipate investing $590,000 of CDBG funding. That's year 11 and year 12 uh, as part of this. I want to bring up two other things. One issue that kept coming up that we didn't feel like we could address through this program was parking. Uh, we saw it on the staff side. We heard about it from our uh, interviews and, and talking with people. And the, the, the parking concern was really focused in on the high and Park Street 12 and 1300 block. And there's a couple of different factors that are contributing to that. One, you've had a lot of single family structures that were built years and years ago, decades ago, when people didn't have a lot of cars. Now you have four or five people living there, four or five cars. There's not enough off street parking to uh, handle that. And also with its proximity to the university, people park on the street, walk to class. Uh, so it creates some issues. We didn't feel like this program could address it, but that was an issue that kept coming up as we had the conversations with everybody. Also want to make mention, uh, while this is going on, you all have been nice enough to give us some general fund money to do similar things. So what we plan to do with that is do some decorative Im improvements. It's not part of this presentation, it's not part of this plan, and that's more for the CDBG regulations to keep some things separate. Uh, some decorative improvements, and we also want to develop a similar residential improvement program to address some things that we haven't had the ability to address in the past. And I'm talking about things that aren't really code violations, but are things that need to be addressed. And what we're looking at is some vegetative removal, brush, trees, fences, outbuildings, things like that. Things that might not be code enforcement, but would still improve the overall quality of the neighborhood, but aren't also eligible for CDBG. So we're kind of trying to separate. And that's what Nick and I have been doing for the last week, is trying to figure out what's eligible, what's not, how do we make this work. Uh, so we're $590,000 of CDBG, year 11 and year 12. As far as the amendment, we propose to use $315,283 in year 11 CDBG funds. Last year, whenever I presented the plan to you all, I said, I will come back and tell you what we're going to do with this money. I didn't think it'd take me a year, but the move to 707 took a lot of time uh, away from me, so it took me a year to come back and tell you that. But that's what we plan to do with the year 11 money and the year 12 money. Uh, all told, between the general fund side and the CDBG side, we're looking at an investment of about $875,000. Um, that's under what we have budgeted. So the way this process works is we'll pick another area. We'll move to that area. We'll start the conversation again. We'll have staff groups going out and making recommendations. We'll come back with what are the needs of this area specifically so we can address those and move on. So any funding that we don't use in 105.2 will then go into the next census block group. That's how we've designed it. And the goal is to have a continual program moving forward so five, ten years down the road we can really look back and see some of the, some of the changes that we made. Um, if anybody has any comments tonight, I'll entertain questions from the commission or Nick can entertain questions from the commission first. If anybody does have any comments tonight, I do ask that they come forward, state their name, some type of contact information uh, so that we can touch base with them if we need to. Also, the deadline for written comments 
is April 30th, and those need to be sent to Nick. Uh, the plan is available on our website. Any questions from the commission? Anyone have any questions for Mr. Childers or Mr. Cook? Comments? This is a public hearing, so if there's anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment about this particular action plan, this would be the time for you to come forward. Seeing no one, is there anything else, Mr. Childers? No, sir. I'd ask that you close the public hearing. Thank you, and that will be the end of the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Dale, for being here. Appreciate it. <clears throat> One thing I forgot to mention on our uh, public uh, items, and on April 25th, that's this Saturday from 8 to 1, at Greenwood High School, the uh, Warren County uh, hazardous waste disposal is available. So if you have any paint cans or electronics or things that, that's available this week, uh, this weekend. And then uh, I believe next week they'll start the tire uh, abandoned tire program out at their Louisville Road storage barn so you can get in touch with Warren County uh, Waste Management for more information. <coughs> All right, do you have any comments, Mr. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do, Mayor. Thank you. There'll be a need for an exec executive session. Kate will read the reason. Pursuant to KRS 61810-1F, discussions which might lead to the appointment of an individual employee. This exception shall not be interpreted to permit discussions of general personnel matters in secret. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Um, I couldn't read your handwriting. Did you have something? Yeah. No, I was just. Uh, we'll tell them you recognize the state. Yes. I, Pass that on so you could recognize the Western students that we have. We have Western Business. students in the crowd with us this evening. Are you are you here as part of uh, what program? Uh, we're here with the class, a journalism class. Journalism. Okay. We appreciate you being here. How many of there are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, maybe more. Thank you for coming. If you've got any questions or anything, feel free to stick around afterwards, but there's an agenda in the back if you want to pick up and take with you. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> okay, approval of minutes from the special meeting on March 30th, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? <clears throat> yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. We provide an opportunity for public comments in our regular meetings. Uh, if you have an uh, item of discussion that you'd like to make comments about on something that's not on tonight's agenda, this would be that opportunity if you have a moment. Seeing no one, we'll continue on with the second reading of Ordinance PG 2015, number 7. Ordinance Amending Code of Ordinances, Ordinance Amending Chapter 2, Administration, Subchapter 2-2, Board of Commissioners of the City of Bowling Green Code of Ordinances, <coughs> to revise the regular meeting schedule of the Board of Commissioners. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. Uh, this is the second reading. We've already discussed once moving to 4.30 for our regular meetings rather than our four o'clock work session. Any other discussion? Starting when? Next time. May 5th. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-47. Municipal Order approving the probationary appointment of Travis D. Findlay to the position of Laborer 2 in the Public Works Department. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. DeFebo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've had some uh, turnover in our Public Works uh, Department. Uh, we advertised, we had 52 applicants for, uh, for a Laborer 2 position. We're, here tonight to recommend Travis Finley uh, to one of the uh, open positions. Travis has a, a wealth of ex practical experience and we feel can do a job for the city. I believe Travis is here. Travis is here. Congratulations, Travis, on your promotion. We appreciate it. <laughs> Any comments or discussion? Please yes, call the roll. Bobby Fields. <laughs> We're watching you, Bobby. <laughs> Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-48. 
Municipal order approving the reappointments of Christy Pruitt and Scott Gary to the Bowling Green Audit Committee. So, so moved. Second. Mo motion by Denning, second by Hill. This is a reappointment of two valued members of the people who provide an extra set of eyes for the city's finances. They review our, our uh, uh, audit and uh, uh, our audit program administered by the young lady sitting back there, smiling and hiding for us. <laughs> And any comments or questions? We appreciate their service and continued service. Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-49. Municipal Order approving the reappointments of Karen Foley and David Lee to the University District Review Committee. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. This is also a reappointment. Uh, Karen Foley works in our Neighborhood and Community Services Department. Dr. David Lee lives in the University District and provided good service for us over the several years. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015, number 50. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-31 for a mobile public education center for the fire department from Bullex Incorporated of Albany, New York, in the amount of $116,705. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perridge. And Mr. DeFebo. Uh, any effective uh, approach to firefighting involves a partnership between the citizens of the community and a well-trained and well-equipped uh, fire uh, professional fire department or a volunteer fire department. Part of the involvement of the citizens is to educate them. Uh, our fire department has asked us to help with the education of, of, of the public by providing a mobile education center that will uh, teach our citizens how to uh, protect themselves from fire and things they, they can do. Uh, Chief Johnson isn't here tonight, but uh, Chief Rock Roar is here if you have any questions. Any comments or questions? This similar program that you see the BGMU pulling their trailers around town, is that correct? It's, uh, it's similar. It's the mobile public education center is, is going to be based uh, in our <coughs> prevention division. It'll be used for anything from school age kids all the way through uh, senior citizens. It teaches disaster preparedness, firefighting uh, in the home, that type of thing. So it's a, it's a very useful tool and we're hoping it broadens our, our demographic. In the, in the community. You have a static facility at the headquarters station. So this on a trailer that you're going around? We do. Uh, the, the static facility is, is used more for uh, the, the smaller children. It's lower ceilings crawling through. This is going to have a lot more electronics involved in it and adult based things that can be used for. We've had trouble in the past sometimes reaching some demographics. Teenage kids, they're easily disengaged. We'll, we'll be able to get them with this, so it'll help with those demographics. I look forward to having a grand opening with it when it comes yeah. in. It's going to be good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015, number 51. Municipal Order Amending, Municipal Order Number 2015-36, approving bid number 2015-29, related to the purchase of a utility vehicle option one from Dever Incorporated of Lexington, Kentucky in the amount of $4,995 to rescind that award, and to authorize the award of the utility vehicle to the next lowest bidder, Cunningham Golf Car Company of Louisville, Kentucky, in the amount of $6,816 for a total bid award in the amount of $100,000. $109,902. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Mr. DeFebo. As the commission will remember, we uh, a short time ago uh, purchased some uh, new golf carts. And as part of that purchase, we also identified the need for utility uh, vehicle in, in the golf division. Uh, we bifurcated the, the, the award. One, most of the bid went to Cunningham. A uh, small part went to Deaver for the uh, utility vehicle. They have since uh, reconsidered their bid and have asked to be dropped out. Uh, we still need the vehicle. We, it's our recommendation that we go with uh, the Cunningham Golf Company, the one that had most of the vehicles and the carts in the first place. It'll cost us a little extra money, uh, but we feel it's a reasonable uh, amount and we need the vehicle. Uh, Brent 
is here. Brent Belcher is here if you have any questions. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. <clears throat> Municipal Order 2015-52. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-26 for City Hall Annex EFIS project from Scott Murphy and Daniel LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in the amount of $66,013. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Fibber. Yes. Uh, Commission remembers we have undertaken two uh, significant capital projects this year uh, involving buildings. One was the NCS, which we have completed and had a grand opening. Uh, Brent's managing that facility. The other is City Hall, which uh, has provided additional space uh, for uh, finance, uh, IT. Uh, Gene Harmon, uh, our law director, and, and will also hopefully house uh, our new health clinic and our first uh, systemic approach to records retention. Part of the annex is, is suffering uh, from, the exterior envelope is suffering from deterioration. We're here tonight to ask you to allow us to spend $66,000 to essentially put system, uh, synthetic stucco uh, to that building. Uh, Jeff Lashley is here to school you on the exact what that is, but uh, we need it and we have the money for it and we'd like to do it. Comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-53. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-32 for design and build services for Commission Chamber audiovisual equipment from M3 Technology Group Incorporated of Nashville, Tennessee in the amount of $80,280. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion by Hill, second by Denning. He wants that. So I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, we don't need any discussion. We'll just go straight to vote. I think Joe's anxious on this one. <laughs> uh, at 4 o'clock, just for the public, um, we had a show and tell uh, about the need uh, for us to improve our communication uh, equipment in this facility to better allow the commission to be heard and talk to each other and for the people in this room to, to hear us as well as those uh, listening to us uh, on TV or via computer. Uh, Kim Lancaster uh, made a, a good argument uh, for the need to undertake this bid with M3 technology. Uh, she's here if you would like. If not, I would uh, like to move forward with the, with the vote. <laughs> Ms. Lancaster is here. She stayed over, came back to, to be with. Is there any questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to make sure that we are talking about the smaller monitors that we, in the, as part of this bid, and not what we saw in the in the presentation at four. Come to the mic and announce your name, please. Kim Lancaster. Yes, um, when we work with M3, we will tell them that we would like to make sure that we go from the 19-inch monitor to either a much smaller monitor and or a tablet, depending on what we can work out. And that they will give a full presentation to you all as well um, for you to approve the final bid. Any other questions? Thank you for sticking around. Thanks. Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-54. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-35 for the purchase of a three-quarter ton truck for the Public Works Department from Gilly Hyde Chrysler of Glasgow, Kentucky in the amount of $27,809. So move. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. As the MO Municipal Order says, we would like to purchase a three-quarter ton vehicle, which uh, is our main workhorse. And many of our departments. Uh, we went out to bid. We had three bidders. Uh, the lowest responsible bidder is Gilly Hyde Chrysler of Glasgow. Uh, Jeff Lashley, I think, is still here if you have any questions. Any comments or questions? Had one local bid, is that right? Yes, they, we had uh, Martin Cadillac. They did receive the uh, local preference, even with that applied uh, Gilly High Chrysler was uh, uh, lower. 
the other automotive companies received the same bid mm -hmm. locally, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Any comments or questions? I might point out that, uh, Joe, there, there aren't that many local dealers that are going to sell three-quarter ton. Yeah, I understand mm -hmm. that. But I, I want some that other person out there looking in on TV land, uh, as we have in the past, saying that uh, none of the local bid is bid uh, on uh, our products and so on. That's my point. And I realize, based on the order, uh, based on the bid, that there's only a limited few that could, but uh, that person out there looking at it on television doesn't know that. Right. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. <coughs> Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-55. Municipal order authorizing and accepting bid number 2015-41 for sinkhole repairs from Fletcher Excavation LLC of Bowling Green, Kentucky in an amount not to exceed $53,000. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. Uh, since we live in a, a karst environment and we're subject uh, to the vagaries of uh, sinkholes in our area, we've been especially cursed this year publicly with uh, a number of sinkholes. We went out to bid uh, to repair those and we uh, have secured Fletcher Excavating uh, to bid on three of our projects. Uh, we feel that more are going to happen. Uh, we would like to increase uh, the amount available for a, a sink fund war chest uh, using Fletcher excavating uh, up to 53,000 because Fletcher won the competitive process. Uh, Jeff Lashley is here to explain if I didn't do a good enough job. Are there any questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-56. Municipal Order approving amendments to the Historic Preservation Design Guidelines as, as set forth by the Historic Preservation Board. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. I believe we had a presentation on this at the last time. Any other comments or questions? And just uh, clarifications and administrative. Uh, Steve Hunter is here if the commission would want the courtesy of hearing him or not. Any comments or questions for Mr. Hunter? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2015, number 8. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a portion of a tract of land containing 17.7759 acres from AG Agriculture to HB Highway Business and RM4 Multifamily Residential, located on Louisville Road and Bristow Road, presently owned by Hilda Jenkins. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Is there Mr. Denning or Mr. DeFebo? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, items 12, 13, and 14 are all in the same family of, of rezoning. Uh, as your protocol is, uh, Steve Hunter is here to uh, speak to any of the, uh, or, or all of those. Uh, all of those were passed by the uh, zoning board and presented for your consideration. And we've been going through things pretty fast and for the enlightenment of our Western students, we get a, a uh, book of material to review before the meeting, so it may seem like we're going pretty fast through that, but we've had time to digest this information and read through it. If we've had any questions, generally we ask prior to we get to the meeting, unless there's something in particular you want to bring out. Mr. Hunter's here if there's any comments or questions about this particular rezoning on the first reading. Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Ordinance BG 2015, number nine, first reading. Ordinance rezoning real estate, ordinance rezoning tracts of land containing 0 0.998 acre from GB General Business RM4 Multifamily Residential and LI Light Industrial to OPC Office Professional Commercial located at 501, 525, and 529 Park Street, presently owned by DWC Properties, LLC, Walter and Debbie York, and Commonwealth Health Corporation. So moved. Second. Motion by Denning, second by Williams. Is there any comments or questions? 
Please call the roll. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Williams. Yes. Denning. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. First reading of ordinance BG 2015, number 10. Ordinance rezoning real estate. Ordinance rezoning a tract of land containing 1.30 acres from AG Agriculture to HB Highway Business, located at 2724 Nashville Road, presently owned by Gilbert, Barbie, Moore, and McElvoy, PSC. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Denning. Again, first reading on the rezoning ordinance. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill. Yes. Perigen. Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. First reading of Ordinance BG 2015, number 11. Ordinance amending Code of Ordinances, Ordinance amending Chapter 25, Code of Ethics of the City of Bowling Green Code of Ordinances to amend subchapters related to gifts and other administrative revisions as recommended by the Board of Ethics. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. Uh, the Kentucky League of Cities uh, recently uh, pronounced uh, City of Bowling Green as being uh, an ethical uh, community and having uh, uh, an ethical structure and, and uh, policy and protocol. Uh, they reviewed our policy and made some recommendations uh, to our Board of Ethics. Uh, Mr. Hawkins uh, representing, uh, not Doug, the other one. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it is here tonight if you have any questions. Essentially, it, it raises the unsolicited gifts uh, from what was an old amount of $50 to 100 I think that that's probably the main ministerial change, but if you want to hear from Mr. Hawkins, he's here. Mr. Hawkins, please step forward and be sworn in. <laughs> may approach the bench. Yes, yes. may please the commission. <laughs> you and Doug aren't related, I take it. We are not related, but... Uh, you are not kin. Before I came in, he said he was the other Hawkins. Okay. <laughs> All right. But I should have known better. It's. I think you guys have gotten a brief or have been briefed on the changes. They're, they are not that substantial, but they are, we thought, was important. Uh, we removed city agency, under city agency 25 to the Bowling Green Enterprise community because they no longer exist as a board. That kind of thing is... A couple of the things that we pointed out to you under 2581 gifts we did include this is one where no public official employee or board member of a city agency is defined in the code shall solicit directly or indirectly any gratuity regardless of value from any person that's where it ended before so even if you were going and asking for donations for a fundraiser technically we had issues with that after we went through the certification wow. process so we added for your uh, review and, and approval uh, the language and not for any intended or actual personal gain or benefit so that way you can go out and ask for people to help the city fundraise for projects that are appropriate uh, and not be in technical uh, conflict with our code we increased the uh, gift level from fifty dollar value to a hundred dollar value to and there's administrative part of that that there's another part of our code that references a hundred dollar values and so we thought that would be consistent uh, the financial disclosures we removed some of the downtown redevelopment inc as a city agency because they're no longer a city board and finally we the city clerk along with the city attorney decided to remove specification to any particular board including greenways commission allows flexibility to the boards that receive state or federal monies which change often so we don't have to keep coming back every time that may apply to the code of ethics so that, those are the suggestions we've asked to be made or nice for your consideration to be made uh, at this time and our ethics board i'm going to put you on the spot can you name them those that serve no, as well. No, they do a they do we do a thankless, <laughs> nameless job. I'm only a three-time chairman of the of the code of uh, of our of our board of ethics. So they do what we do. It's really a good board to be on, though. They work hard, and, and we have. Uh, I know Miss Jackson. I can say she's done a real good job of keeping us in in, in line and on on point. Let's see if I can remember Linda Lee. Michelle Tolbert, Michelle Tolbert yes. Mike Holian, and Kathy Gum. Yeah, Kathy. It's a rough bunch. No, no, they're not. <laughs> they're good to work. They're good group work of people. Really. And thank you for all your service good there job, and taking your buddy. time to look through Appreciate this for us. Thank, thank you. Good thank job. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-57. Municipal Order authorizing submission of a land and water conservation fund grant application to the Kentucky Department for Local Government in the amount of $75,000 for Friends of the Lost River Incorporated. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. DeFebo. Uh, our Friends of the Lost River Cave are uh, 
dedicated to improving the quality of their product they provide to the public there. Uh, one of the newest visions is to uh, do what is called a nature discovery center, which would uh, be focusing on uh, educating uh, young people and the public uh, about nature and will have a, a shelter as well as an amphitheater for uh, teaching. Uh, they are asking us to sponsor their application to the uh, Kentucky Land and Water Conservation Fund. Uh, they're going to uh, leverage 95 grand of their own money against 75 of the state and they're just basically asking you to allow them to use uh, the city structure to apply for that. Uh, Road Lanston's here if you want to hear anything else. Anybody have any comments or questions or a question from Ms. Rowe? Thank you for coming. Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-58. Municipal Order authorizing the Mayor to execute a lease agreement with Downtown Redevelopment Authority Incorporated to lease Circus Square Park for concerts in the park and other Downtown Redevelopment Authority Incorporated <laughs> events. So move. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. DeFebo. Uh One of the great gems of uh, Downtown Bowling Green during summer is the <coughs> summer concert series put on by uh, DRA. Uh, they're here tonight to ask us to uh, allow them to use Circus Square Park uh, to continue these concerts and it's my understanding they will also uh, wish to in increase them. Uh, so y your vote tonight is to allow them to use the park uh, at no cost to provide quality entertainment to our citizens. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-59. Municipal Order approving an amended and restated bulk fuel supply services agreement with Key Oil Company. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams, Mr. Febo. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, there has been uh, some changes with uh, uh, Key Oil closed one of its service centers out on uh, Scottsville Road. It was an important uh, place uh, for the city's uh, vehicles uh, and uh, both public works, police officers, and uh, fire department. Uh, Jeff has negotiated an opportunity to fill that void uh, by working with our, uh, with Key Oil, our, our, our uh, bulk supplier, uh, to provide uh, a, a tank um, that we can access for a public use at the Public Works Center. Jeff, did I explain that correctly? Or did I miss a few facts? Uh, the closure of the uh, Comfuel station on Comfuel, I'm sorry. Is, is what has greatly impacted us. So um, what we, we approached Key, we approached Valor, trying to find a solution for this. Um, Valor, we, we couldn't get a commitment that they were going to replace a station on in the Scottsboro Road area. Uh, we did talk to Key. We did receive written proposals from Key stating what they would do. Uh, more or less, they're providing the hardware uh, to uh, dispense fuel at our operations location at Lapsley Lane. Uh, we would be obligated to purchase fuel from them, which we are um, under our bulk fuel pricing, and um, construct a canopy over the uh, oil dispense or gas dispensing uh, machines and um, it, it's going to help us from a productivity standpoint uh, particularly us it's right there but uh, we're providing that need for the south side uh, fueling uh, fire and uh, police as well uh, this would be a closed facility to the public it would only be available to city vehicles are these above ground tanks or below this is above ground tank uh, and it is called a fire guard tank, so it meets all the extra standards and requirements uh, for, for, for that use. What Jeff also should mention, uh, he's calculated it'll save us about $11,000 to uh, avoid uh, our, our employees and their vehicles traveling to the other lots, so we think it's a good deal. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015, number 60. 
Municipal order approving construction and accepting maintenance of a portion of Nell O'Brien Court in lots 5 and 6 of Farmers Investment Company Incorporated property and lot 2 of Drury Inn subdivision. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill and second by Williams. Mr. Uh, although this is a simple acceptance of uh, some lots into the city's domain, I would like Jeff to come up and explain to you uh, some of the changes that are occurring in, in that area involving traffic signaling and possible other changes. Jeff? Okay, uh, with this development, uh, one uh, requirement that we had from our standpoint uh, was to conduct a traffic impact study. Uh, the idea behind this is as businesses come in, they generate more trips, uh, causing the need for a signal. Uh, through this process, we identify where signals need to be applied, and um, the development is causing the need for that. Uh, so we seek to uh, have the developer put that in. The, uh, we had held this subdivision. We had uh, done a final inspection back some time ago, but to get this final issue worked out, an agreement has been uh, approved and signed with the uh, developer, and they would be uh, putting in the signal at a time that the uh, warrants were met, meaning the number of cars coming through that intersection would hit a certain threshold uh, the signal would go in. So the owner of the development is going to be responsible for the signal? For the installation, and then we accept it like we would a street or anything else for maintenance from that point forward. And I asked that question because of the discussion we had a year ago, I guess, pertaining to another development where that point was not understood. Yeah, and, and again, through this traffic impact study, uh, we have folks that look at that, they look at it pretty hard, and um, that's, our, our view is if it, the need is caused by the development, it should be their cause. Any other questions or comments? I, I got one other yes, point sir. of clarification. Sure. Um, uh, just realize that the municipal order, the uh, Nell O'Brien was misspelled. I, um, so. uh, I would just bring that to your attention. Should be B-R-Y-A-N. It'll be corrected on the thing that I signed. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal order 2015-61. Municipal order approving an amended and restated agreement related to use of pictometry imagery and software between the city of Bowling Green and Warren County. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. One of the successful partnerships that we have with the county, with Warren County, is uh, uh, a contract to share the cost of uh, pictometry. It's used by both us and, and the county as well as planning and zoning and others to uh, help uh, establish uh, various properties within within the county. Um, the county has approached us since they have improved their uh, computer aid dispatch to allow full use of the pictometry that the city has always enjoyed. Uh, we have we would like to agree to that and the cost is would still stay the same uh, the reason being that they just developed a capacity that they could have had before but didn't have so we didn't feel there was a need to surcharge on them for them developing the capacity doug is here if you have any questions about it and comments or questions please call the roll hill yes perigen yes williams yes denning yes wilkerson yes First reading of Ordinance BG 2015, number 12. Ordinance relating to budget amendment. Ordinance approving amendment number three to the City of Bowling Green, Kentucky, annual operating budget for fiscal year 2015. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams, Mr. DeFebo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the commission knows, one of its responsibilities, uh, as well as staff, is to make sure that our budget always stays in balance. Uh, you do this through uh, a budget amendment process. This is amendment number three. Uh, Jeff is here if you have any questions. Many of these are just uh, transfers and acceptance of new money. But if you have a question, Jeff is here to address this. Comments or questions from Mr. Mazel? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2015-62. 
Municipal order approving a job development incentive program employee withholdings credit agreement with Kobe Aluminum Automotive Products, LLC. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perrigan, and Mr. DeFebo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Hill and Ms. Perrigan and myself uh, make up what is known as a job development incentive uh, committee. Uh, we review uh, requests from various employers to access uh, withholding credit of approximately 1%. We review those, we vet those, uh, the state participates. Uh, we're here tonight and Jeff's gonna handle all three of these. Number 22, number 23, and 24 have been uh, vetted by our committee and we recommend uh, approval of all three. And uh, Ms. Hill is the chairman of the committee. Uh, Jeff can answer any technical questions related to any of the three. Any comments or questions for Ms. Hill or Mr. Meisel? Yes, sir. One question, and I ask this every time we have one of those. Who monitors the company as to whether or not they meet their goals and guidelines set forth in this document? Through what? And how? Okay. Yeah, the state monitors some monitors these credits through the Kentucky Business Investment Program, and so a lot of these companies have to reach their target of jobs to be considered activated or active on the state level with their incentives. They can't begin taking any incentives. Say for the first one, Kobe, they wouldn't be able to take any incentives until they reached the 13 new jobs had them in place, provided that proof to the state, and then the state would activate them, and then we would follow suit on the city side, activate their credit, and they would allow them to begin taking the credits. After that, the, they have to report to the state periodically on their performance, if they still have those jobs, if they're still maintaining them, their levels, all of that. Uh, so basically the state monitors this whole program we, we pledge our 1% to participate here locally to allow these companies to uh, reap their 3% credit from their state. So that's basically how the program works. 90, I'd say 99% of all our, our uh, incentives that are brought to you uh, here are kind of a piggyback on this state uh, Kentucky Business Investment Program. So. It's pretty, they, they've pretty much uh, tightened things up when they, when they started. They used to be the old Cretas and all the other programs that they had, but when they, they started this KBI, I think back in 2008 or 9, uh, they put a lot of new rules and regulations in that, that uh, provided for more oversight on the program. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. I guess, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just hit all three of them real quick. Um, Kobe is, uh, of course, in the South Industrial Park. They're going to add the 13 new jobs, which equates to $45,000 incentive for the company over 10 years. But the city will uh, receive th around, roughly $38,000 uh, in return for that one. And uh, the next one is Capstone. I believe that's an expansion up in the uh, Trans Park that's going to produce 30 new jobs projected. Uh, that company is going to get $106,000 in incentives and the city will receive about 90,000 over the next 10 years. Uh, the, then the last one is Bluegrass Supply Chain Services. I believe that this one's going to locate up in the Scotties Industrial Park off Louisville Road. <clears throat> it's going to produce 55 new jobs. That company is going to get about $186,000 in incentives with, through withholding credits over the next 10 years and the city's share would be 158,000. So in all total, we're looking at 98 new jobs here in the area coming in the next year or so, once they reach their targets, and $337,000 in incentives going to these companies. And basically that is when they bring in the jobs, they are rebated a portion of the tax money right. that they pay. Right. I'd like to add, uh, at the end of 10 years, uh, we get 100%. Exactly. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perrigan? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. 
Municipal Order 2015-63. Municipal Order approving a job development incentive program employee withholdings credit agreement with Capstone Container Corporation. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. We've already had the explanation. Are there any other questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. And Municipal Order 2015-64. Municipal Order approving a job development incentive program employee withholdings credit agreement with Bluegrass Supply Chain Services. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Perigen. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Perigen? Yes. Williams? Yes. Denning? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. And that's the last item on our agenda. We'll be going into closed session for a few minutes, but mm -hmm. I remind you that our next scheduled meeting is May 5th at 4.30. No vote expected. No vote will be expected, Katie. Thank you for tuning in.